you might get your wig, put it on and think, oh Lord, what have I done? What have I purchased? However, I'm gonna give you a bonus one here, a sixth thing that you could look at. Let me show you what you need to look for in a wig so that you're going to get all of those realistic features. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Chiquelle YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and today we're gonna have a little bit of a discussion on what you need to look for in a wig if you want it to look as natural as you possibly can get it. But before I jump into it, I'm gonna remind you to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can learn even more about alternative hair. Okay, so when a lot of women start venturing into the wig world, often they go onto a website, look at a wig, see a style and go, oh, that looks like a style that I think I would like. They pick a color, they hit purchase, they get it, and then they put it on and they realize that it is just not what they expected at all. What a lot of women don't truly realize is that there's a lot more to a wig than just the style. There are so many factors that you need to look into, into a specific wig to see if it's going to be one that's going to work for you and to see if it's going to be one that's going to look somewhat natural. So we're gonna talk about a lot of those things today. Now I'm gonna make this as to the point and concise as I can, but you never know where my little mouth is gonna take me today. <laughs> I might start talking about puppies for all I know. Okay, now before I start talking about all of the things you need to look at in a wig for it to be natural, I want to give you an example of a wig that might not be quite as natural as you want it to be. Now, it's it's not horrible by any means, but it's, it's not going to be in the upper echelon of natural looking wigs. Okay, so I'm wearing a wig right now called Reese and it's by Noriko. And like I said, it's not a horrible wig. It's just not going to be your most natural. And here is why. So Reese has a basic cap and a basic wig cap basically means that the whole wig has been machine made. None of it has been hand tied. It's all been sewn with a machine. One of the features you might find on a basic cap is a hard front. Now, when I say hard front, I mean that it's just literally hard and there is no illusion of a hairline here. All of the hair is just machine sewn at the front and there's often a little bit of what we would call permatease right at the front, which kind of gives it a little bit of volume and tries to hide a little bit of that hard front in a way. But I mean, at the end of the day, you can't really hide that hard front on a wig. So that is one reason why a wig might not be natural looking. You know, no one has a hairline that looks straight and hard like that. <laughs> Another reason why a basic cap might not be as natural looking to everybody is because it has what's called a permatease top. Now a permatease top means that you're not going to see any illusion of scalp. So here, all you can see, I'm going to try and get close. All you can see is all this like fuzzy, short haired, sort of crimped hair. And that is called permatease. And what that does is it like I said earlier about the front, it gives it a little bit of volume and it kind of disguises that part line a little bit. And it also tries to hide any machine sewing and any wefting that's below it. Now, the thing about permatease is that it gives it a lot of volume, which is another reason why some women might not find basic caps natural because often the permatease gives them too much volume. That might be a little bit overachieving for someone who has been going through hair loss and is used to not a lot of hair. So as soon as they put on these wigs with that permatease top that has a lot of that permatease in it, it just to them instantly screams out wig because they are not used to having so much floofy hair on them. So when you put all of these factors together and realize that you don't have that natural hairline, you don't have an illusion of scalp and you have too much floofiness, you might get your wig, put it on and think, oh Lord, what have I done? What have I purchased? And especially if this is your very first wig, I think most women are going to want something that is going to feel and look as natural as they can possibly get it. And I believe once you start getting comfortable with wigs and feeling like you're confident in wearing them out and about, 
that's when you can start to experiment a little bit more with other options or lower budget options or items like this that maybe are more fun for the style as opposed to what the whole cap actually is. Now, one other thing I didn't cover on these basic caps is that when you do have a basic cap, you're also gonna have it wefted. So when I say wefted, I mean that it is sewn on into rows like you see here, kind of like how hair extensions are in rows on women's hair. This is kind of like that, but they're just sewn onto the cap instead. Now, a great thing about an open wefted cap is that they're stretchy, they are breathable, they are ventilated, but they don't have as natural of a movement as real hair would or as another cap that I'm gonna show you in a minute here. Plus, you have the potential of seeing through that hair and into all the wefting that's underneath it. All right, now I'm going to reiterate that a basic cap is not a bad thing. There are so many women who love basic caps, and especially if you can find one that has bangs, you're gonna find that it's going to look okay. But if you are truly looking for the most realistic looking cap, then you're not gonna find it in a basic cap. So now that we've gone over sort of the basics of a basic cap, let me show you what you need to look for in a wig so that you're going to get all of those realistic features. All right, let me go back to the wig that I was wearing when we first started this video. Now I was wearing, or I am wearing now, a wig called Dalgona 16 Hand Tied, and it's by a brand called Beltress. And this is in the color Root Beer Float Blonde, by the way, in case you were wondering. Okay, now right away when I put this on, you might be looking at it being like, okay, I see how this one is looking a little bit more realistic and let me show you why. First thing you're likely going to want to look for in these realistic wigs is whether or not it has a lace front. So a lace front is what we see here where all of the fibers at the front of the wig are hand sewn onto this lace-like material, giving you that illusion that it's growing right from your hairline. So this is much different than that hard front that we were looking at on Reese that I was just wearing. This is Reese's front and it's just that hard front and there's no lace. But on this one, you are going to have that lace which gives you the ability to pull it off of your face and make it look sort of like it is growing from your hairline. The second thing you're going to want to look for is whether or not it has a monofilament top or a monofilament part. So a monofilament feature on the top is going to be really helpful in giving you the illusion of a part line. So Dalgona 16 Hand Tied has a full monofilament top. So here you can see that we have that illusion of scalp at the part line there. And the wonderful thing about a monofilament top is that it allows you to part your hair anywhere you want while still maintaining that illusion of scalp. Whereas when we were looking at Reese earlier, we were seeing this permatease top. There's no illusion of scalp. There's just this short haired crimped effect right at the root and you don't see through to scalp at all. Now, if you were to look at the inside of a wig like this, you're gonna see something that looks like this. So this is a monofilament top and this is the lace front where each individual fiber has been hand tied onto all of this section here. And when a fiber has been hand sewn onto this material, that gives the fiber the ability to move in any direction that you want. And therefore it gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to styling. Now, I know I mentioned that Dalgona 16 hand tied here has a full monofilament top, but I also talked about having just a monofilament feature of some sort, like a monofilament part. So if you have a monofilament part, it's gonna give you that same illusion of scalp, but here you can see the difference. Here, the monofilament is only in the part line. So the downfall is that you don't have the ability to change the part anywhere on the cap. You only have the ability to change the part within this sort of almost one inch section. But the great thing is that it's going to save you a little bit of money because it's not completely hand tied on top and it's still going to give you a realistic illusion of scalp right at that part line right here. So if you are busy searching through descriptions of wigs and you see the term monofilament, 
in there, then that's a good thing. And it means that you're going to get that illusion of scalp. All right, the third thing that you're going to wanna to look for if you are looking for a more realistic look for you is you're probably gonna to wanna to look for a low density wig. Now, when I talk about density, that refers to how much hair is actually on the wig. A low density wig is going to have a low amount of hair or fiber. A high density wig is going to have a lot. Now, I do understand that maybe not everyone is going to want to look for a low density wig, but I do know that in a lot of cases, women who are deciding to search for wigs are typically women who have experienced hair loss to some degree. I understand how that's not everybody's situation, but the majority of women looking for wigs are women who have experienced hair loss. And when you're experiencing hair loss, you're used to not having a ton of hair on your head. So when you go from having your own bio hair, that's just not a lot, to suddenly a wig with a high density and so much hair, you're gonna put it on and immediately be like, oh no, that's <laughs> that's not for me. This looks too wiggy because this doesn't look realistic to what I know that I am. So currently I'm wearing a wig called Destiny by Beltress and this is a low density piece. So there's not a ton of hair on it, which means that if you are someone who has been experiencing hair loss and you get a wig that is low density like Destiny is, it's going to help ease you into the wig world as opposed to starting off with one that's a medium to higher density. Now, the one thing about trying to figure out the density on a wig is that if you're looking at the product on our website or on a lot of other websites, it doesn't often state exactly what the density is. So honestly, your best option is to come to YouTube and do your research. Although if you're here right now watching this, then you probably already know that. You probably already know that coming to YouTube, watching review videos is going to help you figure out the type of density that you might be looking at in a wig. So other than the lace front, having a monofilament feature on the top and looking for a wig that is a lower density, something else you might wanna look at is the amount of permatease that a wig has. Now, I've talked about permatees a lot before. I've made a couple videos about permatees and about the pros and cons of permatees. So if you want to dive deeper into that and figure out more about permatees, then I suggest you go watch my videos on that. So I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty of permatees, but essentially, like I mentioned earlier in this video, permatees is that short haired crimping effect at the root of your wig that's going to give it volume. And often it's also going to hide and conceal any of the wefting that's below. Now, when you have a cap, that has monofilament features on it, you can still have permatease within the rest of the wig. You'll never have permatease where that monofilament hand-tied feature is, but you could have permatease throughout the rest of the cap if it's an open wefted cap. If you are looking for something that lays really low profile, kind of like this one here, that doesn't have too much poofiness in the crown or poofiness out at the sides, then you're going to want to find a wig that has minimal to no permatease. And now unfortunately, kind of like the whole density issue, you're not gonna be able to read in the description of a wig on a website whether or not it has permatease. That is something that you kind of have to go and look into yourself. Again, the best way to do that is to come onto YouTube like you're already doing and search for a wig and look at a review. I try my best in all of my reviews to talk about the density and the permatease on a wig so that you guys know exactly what you're gonna get. So other than the lace front, a monofilament feature, lower density and minimal to no permatease, the fifth thing you might want to look for is what type of cap is the wig on? The most natural looking cap and quite frankly, the most common comfortable cap you'll find is going to be a hand tied cap and a hand tied cap looks like this. And what it means is essentially that every hair or every fiber has been either individually or, you know, in clusters hand sewn onto this cap. And that is going to give you an extremely natural movement of hair and allow it to go in any direction that it wants really seamlessly. So it's going to give you a natural movement of hair. The alternative is going to be like we mentioned earlier when we were talking about Reese, um, which is going to be that open wefted or that wefted cap. Now this has a wefted cap where again, all the hair or fiber is sewn on into rows. An open wefted cap isn't necessarily going to look unnatural. I mean, you just saw this one on me and this one looks pretty natural, even though it is open wefted. However, the general movement of hair isn't going to be in that all around motion like you're going to find on a hand tied cap. It's really just gonna have more of a natural side to side motion. But if we were to go upwards, you're gonna see through 
to all of this wefting. And it's a little bit more unnatural. See how it doesn't necessarily want to go up as easily? So although open wefted caps look natural when they're down and when they move a little bit, overall it's not going to move quite in the same fashion as it will if it were a hand tied cap. And let me show you what you might see when I put this on. So this one, again, is Delgona 16 and it's a hand tied cap. So when I move the fibers on this one, you're not gonna see through to wefting. You're just gonna see through to the fibers that are hand sewn onto the cap, making it look a little bit more natural than, whoop, <laughs> I'm falling over, <laughs> making it look a little bit more natural than if an open wefted cap were to be shown through. You're also gonna find that hand tied caps are just a little bit more lighter weight. So Dalgona 16 here has all of the features that I was referring to. It has the lace front, has the monofilament top, it has no permatease on here. See how it's laying nice and flat at my crown here? It is a lower, lower to medium density, and it has a hand tied cap. So it has all of those features that are gonna make it look like it's a natural wig. I'm gonna show you one more wig here that's going to give you that natural appearance that has all of those same features. The lace front, the monofilament top, the hand tied cap, the low density, and the no permatease. So this is another one that you might find looks natural. Okay, now I have talked about the five main things that I feel you need to look at when looking for that natural wig. However, I'm gonna give you a bonus one here, a sixth thing that you could look at. Now, this is something that might not play a huge role in the grand scheme of things, but it might, so I'm gonna mention it. Now, what I'm talking about here is the type of fiber. So if you are looking into synthetic wigs and you have just decided you're not gonna look at human hair, I mean, if I'm being honest, human hair is going to look the most realistic and the most natural because it's, well, it's human hair. <laughs> but if you have decided that you are going to go the synthetic route, then you need to be aware of the fact that there are two different types of synthetic fibers. Now I'm not gonna go and explain the fibers in depth right now because I've also done a video that talks about the difference in the fibers. However, I will just briefly mention what they kind of look like. I'm currently wearing a plain synthetic wig right now. And you may notice that it's a little bit shiny. You can see a little bit of sheen. You can see the light sort of bouncing off and reflecting on it. You're gonna find that plain synthetic wigs like this one are gonna be a little bit shinier than what we would call heat-friendly synthetic fiber. So my Delgona 16 hand tied is synthetic, but it's the heat-friendly synthetic. And you're going to find that overall heat-friendly synthetic fibers are going to have a little bit more of a matte finish in comparison to plain synthetics. So if the shine is something that really bothers you, then you may find that you're gonna gravitate more towards the heat-friendly synthetic fibers. That being said, there are solutions to reduce the shine on your synthetic wigs, like using dry shampoo, spraying it all over, getting baby powder, sprinkling it everywhere, kind of working it in and brushing it out. Those are ways that you can reduce the shine. And also over time, the shine will start to gradually reduce a little bit. It's not gonna fully go away, but it's going to reduce a little bit over time. But if you're feeling like you just really don't want any shine or you want like as little shine as possible and you are doing synthetics, then heat friendly synthetics might be your option. All right, now that I've talked your ear off and given you everything you need to know to help you find that realistic wig, there's one disclaimer I should make for all of this. And that is the fact that Finding a wig that has all of the features that I've mentioned and all of those hand tied components, that unfortunately is going to increase the price of your wig. So you are going to find that if you want that really beautiful natural looking wig, it's probably going to be more expensive than if you got one that, you know, is a basic cap like Reese was at the beginning. A basic cap, because it is machine sewn, is not going to be as expensive, of course, as a completely hand sewn cap. If you are just not in that stage where you can invest in every single feature that I mentioned here, you might be able to kind of pick and choose a couple of those features. Like maybe you can find a wig that has a basic cap, but it has a lace front, so it gives you that ability to pull it off your face or maybe you can find more of a basic cap, but the density is lower. You can 
pick and choose different features on a wig and find wigs that have some of those features to sort of help you out. Oh gosh, this hair is looking a little funky there. <laughs> But that's all I'm gonna say for now or else I think we're gonna be here all day. So I'm gonna let you go, get out of here, go enjoy your day, stop watching me ramble on. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I will see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye.